So, another example that we can take uh, for this design and different sizes for different users as chairs for students in uh, let us say elementary school So, in this way uh, these are the principles. So, uh, let us go uh, one by one in order to explain and in, in order to understand uh, this with uh, uh, some examples. So, first we will uh, take this design for extreme individuals. So, in that so uh, we can categorize this extreme individual as designing for maximum and designing for the minimum. It means that uh, uh, we have to take care of the maximum height or the minimum height persons. So, uh, if we take an example of uh, doorway heights. So, in a room there is a door doorway and we have to if we have to uh, uh, design a doorway. So, the we have to take care of the height of the maximum person that can uh, do entry and exit of that particular door. So, doorway height is the one of the example in the category of designing for maximum. Automobile door openings, mattress sizes and as far as designing for the minimum is concerned. So, the this is the opposite situation of the designing for the minimum in which design features must accommodate the fifth percentile and here uh, as uh, if you go for design for maximum here you uh, take the about 95th percentile of the user population. So, example of this the designing for the minimum body dimensions uh, include the height of kitchen cabinets, location of levers and dials on equipment and weights of the portable power tools. In fact, uh, I am thinking of the other examples of the design for the maximum. So, other examples may include uh, the elevation of uh, overhead conveyors and uh, other equipments. Uh, like suspended from uh, ceiling in factory etcetera. So, in this way so designing for maximum dimension and designing for minimum dimension is the uh, two categories uh, for the designing of extreme individuals. So, now uh, the another category uh, is designed for adjustability. So, in many cases the products are designed so that uh, certain features can be adjusted in order to have uh, in order to give more flexibility for the users. And uh, example of this uh, adjustable product features uh, include uh, automobile driver seats, adjustable steering wheel in automobile, office chairs work table heights, tilt angles of computer monitors, lawn mowers uh, handle heights, bicycle handlebars so on and so forth. 
So, designing for adjustability allows virtually all users to make the necessary adjustments uh, in any product uh, or let us say any system product or system or any equipment to suit their particular body dimensions. So, the user practice in these uh, cases is to design uh, the adjustment features to include uh, a certain specified range such as uh, fifth to the 95th percentile. So, uh, if the products are intended for both male and female users, then appropriate range uh, would be between the fifth uh, percentile for females up to the 95th percentile of for the male. So, uh, that is the case and uh, here are the examples uh, for uh, design for adjustability and you can also uh, use your mind to find out what are the products uh, which has uh, adjustability or flexibility uh, in uh, in their one of the parts of the product. And you can easily find out these products in your surroundings. As an example, uh, this particular figure you can see a person uh, is sitting inside the car and this person, uh, this person is sitting uh, on the driving seat in fact and, uh, and holding the steering wheel. So, the measurements are taken with the human body dimensional coordinates x, y, z with respect to body landmarks as reference points at work or motion in the workspace. Typically, they are represented in three dimensional coordinates x, y, z with respect to the body landmarks as reference points. So, in automobile design, at first the position of the occupant driver with comfortable uh, driving posture on the seat is defined. Then all other components are arranged around the driver to provide easy reach, vision and control operation. So, you can see what uh, although if you sit you do not uh, uh, bother about the various uh, aspects, but uh, uh, at the initial stage of its design and development those uh, facts and uh, your comfortability has already been considered uh, while designing uh, that particular system. So, uh, you can see that the eye location uh, is a main uh, segment head and eye movement should be there and he has to take care of shoulder and elbow and hip uh, widths. So, uh, basically uh, the designer aim is to uh, take care of this hand reach that should be proper knee clearance uh, and uh, that should be a pro enough distance. So, that uh, a person having a shorter height uh, shorter length of its foot can easily uh, go uh, to press uh, those uh, uh, those pedals in the form of clutch accelerator and brakes. And uh, there is there should be a proper foot position and clearance as well as uh, the seat adjustment is also necessary. So, these are the important uh, points that need to be considered while uh, uh, designing a driver seat in a, in a four wheeler. So, uh, these are the very important points and uh, uh, here uh, this particular example you can take it as a design for adjustability. So, uh, another category in which design uh, discrimination uh, can be performed is design for average user. So, in which uh, uh, the situations you can take it as a uh, there are uh, certain situations uh, where uh, the principles of design for extreme individuals and design for adjustability are not appropriate. So, uh, the notion of uh, extreme individuals is not applicable to the design problem and uh, designing adjustable features into the product is itself impossible or cost prohibitive. So, we have to take care of the cost also. 
So, in these cases uh, the compromise is to design for the average user uh, that is uh, the 50th percentile point. So, uh, here as a as the line is suggesting that uh, uh, this particular design for average user is for the situation where the design for extreme individuals and adjustability are not feasible. So, examples are stair heights. So, uh, when you uh, go up uh, to some floor. So, the stair heights if you use the stairs in order to ride uh, uh, to the next level. So, stair heights are uh, very much important factors which is generally uh, aimed to design for average user. Stadium seats, sofas, heights of checkout counter at supermarkets and length of the shovel uh, handles. So, these are the uh, sharp examples uh, which you can relate uh, and which you can uh, put in the category of design for average users. So, another kind of uh, category is different uh, sizes for different users. So, there is a kind of design uh, like in some product situations only way uh, only way to adequately accommodate uh, the user population is, uh, uh, is for the same product to be made available in different sizes. So, so, important example uh, of this particular situation is uh, clothing, shoes, uh, elementary school uh, desk chairs. So, uh, these are the uh, basic examples uh, which you can uh, have in the category of uh, designing different uh, sizes for different uh, size users. So, uh, let us say in case of clothing if you uh, look into, so uh, different body dimensions are there. So, if you, uh, if you think uh, for a while that uh, if you think uh, let us say for shirt this, uh, this is a very basic example that you can correlate and you can easily find out enormous uh, uh, real life uh, examples uh, which you can correlate with this particular situation. So, I am uh, taking here as a shirt. So, the uh, here in this uh, while designing a shirt the important dimensions are neck, you have to take care of the chest dimensions, you have to take care of waist uh, circumferences, forward reach, we have uh, uh, studied in uh, the previous lectures that how uh, we will be managed, uh, will uh, will manage to calculate uh, the distinct dimensions of various parts of the body in the anthropometry. So, the forward reach also uh, that is uh, you can say as a arm length, any other thing that is uh, that can be uh, uh, this waist is, uh, circumference you can treat as a uh, for long sleeve shirts. For long sleeve shirts. So, uh, these are the and for uh, trousers you have to take care of uh, leg length, crotch height, and uh, uh, waist. Uh, girth etcetera. So, uh, and so on. So, these uh, kind of uh, anthropometric data which are available for all body dimensions that are used by the clothing industry to design garments in different sizes. So, uh, the problem for individual garment comp uh, companies is to a uh, garment in different sizes. So, uh, this uh, the problem is uh, to decide uh, is to decide which sizes and how many sizes to produce. So, this is the big challenge when it comes to the design for 
different sizes for different uh, size users because the the variety of user is uh, is huge and uh, and uh, as a company uh, you have to decide which sizes and how many sizes to produce so like uh, as an example you can take that uh, men's suit coat sizes available for male order clothing store so that is uh, uh, different sizes are there short regular long extra long portly short portly regular so this is the table uh, that is giving you uh, so uh, you can easily imagine the inventory problems and uh, the challenges in the garment industry uh, is to find out uh, the right balance between satisfying customer needs and keeping production and inventory cost in check so uh, the major concern is here the satisfying customer needs and obviously keeping production and inventory cost in check so these are the challenges uh, which uh, those industry face industries face and uh, based on which uh, they decide uh, their course of action so now uh, after accomplishing this uh, various designing aspects uh, let's have a brief look about uh, two philosophies based on which uh, uh, the decision is made uh, in terms of uh, ergonomic uh, uh, ergonomic uh, consideration so there is two philosophy uh, the fitting the person to the job and second is fitting the job to the person so uh, first we will go for the fitting the job to the person so obviously it is opposite to the fpj uh, fitting uh, the person to the job and uh, this uh, common uh, employment uh, practice prior to ergonomics that was based on uh, this philosophy called called fitting the fitting the person to the job so which recommended that the worker be selected on the basis of their uh, mental aptitude and physical characteristics uh, for a particular job opening so that involves uh, uh, also stated in the first slide in the introduction that uh, various uh, test is used to required that uh, uh, let's say psychometric test this test is used for uh, checking the intelligence and uh, personality characteristics and uh, so a uh, workers physical attributes uh, were used in the selection process of the job requirement or job requiring characteristics such as size and strength also so in uh, now fpj approach uh, is also used uh, is considered among the eligibility factors for certain position in many many hiring uh, situations today itself so uh, so here the fitting the job to the person it's a philosophy that designed the job so that any member of the workforce can perform it and uh, why the fjp philosophy has evolved because the changes in the worker skill requirements demographic changes uh, like more women in the workforce social and political uh, changes uh, equal opportunity loss so now uh, uh, that uh, ergonomic approach is uh, diamet diamet uh, diametrically opposite to fpj so the philosophy in ergonomics is fitting the job to the person like uh, designing the job so that the nearly any member of the workforce can perform it so basically there are several factors that explain why the new philosophy has evolved and now occupies a position that operates in a parallel with and sometimes uh, supersedes the fpj approach so uh, the second thing is fitting the person to the job uh, in which uh, 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 the consider uh, consider workers physical and mental aptitude in employment decisions so using worker size and strength as a criteria for physical work it's a common philosophy uh, prior to ergonomics and uh, like uh, fpj is also 
uh, nowadays uh, is uh, uh, being adopted uh, by several uh, in a several hiring uh, sectors like uh, for example educational requirement for technical uh, positions that is uh, one of the uh, interesting example uh, in that uh, category so fpj is uh, still important in this uh, regime so now uh, finally uh, uh, one question for you uh, which uh, you have to find out that you have to, uh, the task that uh, has been assigned to you that you have to standardize the office chair so one chair must fit for all and uh, uh, you have to find out that what are the possible static anthropometric measurements required for a chair design in sitting posture so that uh, you need to find out uh, first uh, you have to take care uh, of the problem statement that uh, if you have to st standardize of a chair so what what kind of anthropometric measurement do uh, will you uh, consider in order to design a chair so think about those things and uh, recall uh, previous slides so that you could uh, uh, be having a better idea of uh, what uh, are those measurements and what uh, you have to consider in order to design this office chair. Uh, basically, uh, I have also put the answers of that. So, uh, somehow you can uh, uh, correlate uh, with this positions uh, there are several dimensions of the human body in a static or seated condition. So, in a seated condition you can uh, think of a sitting height, sitting eye height, sitting shoulder height and knee height. So, these are the basic four uh, dimensions that you can consider uh, while designing of a chair and a lot more things are required that you need to think and uh, uh, you have to uh, uh, accumulate those uh, data which are required in order to design an office chair. So, and another thing that I am giving to you, uh, it is up to you and uh, you have to uh, use your mind in order uh, to think uh, uh, towards this problem which is uh, you have to list about the areas and places where anthropometric data uh, may be required. So, we have now uh, covered this particular anthropometric uh, topic and uh, uh, have got a clear idea about what this particular anthropometry is all about and uh, what uh, now you have also developed understanding towards uh, this anthropometric data and how you can calculate it and what are the, uh, uh, but you have to find out and you have to think and you have to visualize in your surrounding that what are the areas and places where you can implement uh, this uh, anthropometric knowledge and, uh, uh, the, and uh, finding out the way how you can cont contribute in this particular area. So, uh, ergonomics is just about to correlate uh, the happenings in your surrounding and what uh, best you can uh, provide in terms of solution in order to improve the efficiency of that particular system. So, this anthropometry is one of the kind of uh, uh, ergonomic area where uh, the people can contribute. So, think of about that and uh, list out those places where this anthropometric uh, analysis can be performed. So, uh, this is regarding lecture closing and before that uh, just, uh, uh, just of the fact that uh, uh, just to have a statement that in just half an hour your body gives off enough combined heat to bring a half gallon of water to boil. And just I have added some fact and uh, it is up to you, uh, now you have to use your mind that uh, if you were a fashion designer, which type of tools would you use to measure the dimensions of the models accurately. So, think of the situation and uh, try to answer this question and just a gravity I have added like uh, I pruned a tree once, so technically I am allowed to put branch manager on my resume. So, uh, thank you very much that is all. Uh, uh, for now. So, please read anthropometric from recommended reference textbooks for uh, enhancing your uh, understanding towards this course and this topic as well. Thank you.